Now, what I want to do is next go over to Joshua. And in Joshua, we're going to have a bunch of maps here and things. We're going to set this up. Joshua involves the taking of the promised land. And here, you guys are going to be the country of Jordan, Sea of Galilee, Jordan River, and I'm the Dead Sea. And this is the country of Israel. You guys are the Mediterranean Sea. And so the geography here, we're going to set this up. But basically, Joshua is going to take the, the people into the promised land. We're going to look at three victories, two problems, and then the issue with war. Three victories, two problems, and the issue with war. On the nature of heroes. There is, in the book of Joshua, there's a, a transition in leadership. The transition is from Moses to Joshua. Whenever there's transition in leadership, can there be problems? Whenever there's transition in leadership, can there be problems? Are certain people going to be loyal to the old leader? Is the new leader going to do it exactly the way the old leader did it? No. And so there's going to be these, these tensions between, by the way, would you like to be Joshua? Would you? No. Moses, Moses, was Moses the man? Okay, Moses was the man. The Old Testament, I mean, this guy, five books of the Bible, going up on Mount Sinai, coming down with the Ten Commandments. I mean, Moses is a man, right? I mean, speaks to God face to face and stuff. And now Joshua comes along. He's got to fill into jo Moses' shoes. Would you like to step into those shoes? Those are big shoes, okay? So Joshua's got a lot going, you know, big thing to fill. And so this transition of leadership in the book of Joshua, we're going to see a little bit of that initially and stuff. But what you find is that God is the ever-present hero. That actually it's not Moses, it was what? It was God's presence with Moses that split the Red Sea. It was God giving the law at Sinai. And so what you have with Joshua, now God is going to come and say, Joshua, as I was with Moses, I'm going to be with you that it is God who is the ever-present hero. And so God is going to be the, the leader, so to speak, and he leads through Moses, he can lead through Joshua. And so the focus of transition of leadership needs to be on the Lord. Leaders need for encouragement. Um, do leaders ever really get down? Did Moses, did Moses himself, Moses the man, did he ever get down? So much so that he said, God, take my life if this is how you're going to treat me. Moses really got upset, and he got down and things like that. And you're going to see this happen with Elijah. You're going to see many of the leaders in the Old Testament really, really get down. Jeremiah, Jeremiah writes the book of Lamentations. That kind of says it all, doesn't it? I mean, Jeremiah, a lot of these guys get really down. God comes to Joshua, and look what he says to Joshua. This is kind of funny here. I think this is our next point. Uh, here it is. Yeah. Look at what he says. God comes to Joshua and he says, No one will be able to stand up against you, Joshua, all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Is that a beautiful statement? God says to Joshua, I will never leave you nor forsake you, Joshua. I'll be with you. Okay, Emmanuel, I will be with you. But then he says, Hazak ve'amatz, be strong and very courageous. Be strong and courageous. Okay? And God is going to say this, Hazak Vehamat says, be strong and courageous, numerous times to Joshua. And it makes me think that Joshua was a little bit uh, queasy about taking over this leadership. And God tells him, be strong and very courageous, because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their forefathers to give them. And then he says again, be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. And then if you go down to verse 9, he says again, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and very courageous. Be strong and courageous. So God says to Joshua, must be, I don't know how many times here, be strong and courageous. Apparently Joshua needed some encouragement and stuff, and God's going to give that to him, tell him be strong and courageous. He's going to lead his people. Now, do people compare the old leader with the present leader, the new leader? Do the people compare the old leader with the new leader. You guys ever been in a church where you get a new pastor and everybody compares him with the old pastor? This guy is you know, better, this guy's worse, or this guy did this way, and we've always done it this way, this other way, and things. What's interesting is God himself says, Joshua, as I was with Moses, I will be with you. And the Bible itself sets up this comparison. The Bible itself sets up this comparison. Both Joshua and Moses split waters at the beginning of their kind of their ministry. Both of them split waters. Moses splits the Red Sea. 
Joshua splits the what? The Jordan River. When they cross the Jordan River, he doesn't split it, but the waters go down and he goes across the Jordan River. As they cross water, the Red Sea or the Reed Sea, so Joshua is going to cross water. And in chapter 4, verse 14, this comes up where the Jordan River, uh, they cross the Jordan River on dry ground. They cross the Jordan River on dry ground. God hardens the heart of Pharaoh for Moses. Do you remember under Moses, God hardened the heart of Pharaoh under Moses? And God hardens the heart of the Canaanites. And so the Canaanites resist, and God hardens both the enemies of Moses, and God hardens the heart of the enemies of Joshua. This is an interesting one. See, anybody remember, I think it was back in Exodus 17. Moses goes out to battle, and they're told, Moses goes up and he holds up his javelin, he holds up the spear, and when he holds up the spear, what happens? They win, and do you remember his hand gets tired and his spear goes down, and then they lose? And so what, Aaron and Hur hold his hand up, and it's like, okay, so you got these two guys holding Moses' arms up, pretty soon they get tired, so what did they do? They end up propping rocks underneath Moses' hand to keep his spear up there. Guess what? Joshua goes into battle, guess what he does? Holds up the javelin, and they win the day. Same thing Moses did, hold up the javelin, win the victory. And uh, so you get the same kind of thing. Moses did it, holding up the javelin, winning the victory, so did Joshua. Here's another one. Their victories are put side by side. I think it's in Joshua chapter 12. It says, here are the victories of Moses, and it says, here are the victories of Joshua. And they're put side by side to kind of compare the two. And it's just kind of interesting, they're, they're parallel there. And then lastly, and this is one that's really neat too, um, Moses sees the angel of the Lord. Where does Moses first meet the angel of the Lord? In a burning bush. And Moses sees the burning bush, and he comes up and says, whoa, look at this burning bush and stuff. He comes up to the burning bush, and what does the angel of the Lord tell him to do? Take off your shoes, you're on holy ground. So Moses goes, whoa, you know, it's a burning bush, talking bush, okay? And into what is your name and stuff, and this, yeah, 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 I am that I am, comes out of the bush. Joshua meets an angel of the Lord. He comes up buzzing up like that too. And the angel of the Lord tells him, guess what? Get your shoes off. You're on holy ground. So both of them approach this angel of the Lord and both are told to take off their sandals because they're on holy ground. So all I'm trying to say is there seems to be this parallel between Moses and Joshua that's done early in the chapters of Joshua. Now, some things here. Um, all Israel... This is a, a unique time in Israel's history. All Israel is together. It's, it's kind of like early America. In early America, we're, we're all the people like Americans, you know? And everybody was together kind of thing. And um, if you look at uh, George Whitfield going up and down the coast, uh, and one of the great things Whitfield did was basically link the 13 colonies together through the support of his orphanage down in Georgia. So the people in Massachusetts contributed to Georgia, and the people from Connecticut contributed to Georgia. He went to Philadelphia. Benjamin Franklin commi you know, commits and stuff. So what you have is this Whitfield going up and down the East Coast, linking the, the states together. They struggled, actually, with their identity. But uh, you had this kind of thing early, similar type thing with, with, with Israel. This is going to be one time they're together. Is Israel going to later on split north and south? Just like America in the Civil War, Israel's going to split north and south. And so that'll come later. But at this time when they go in, by the way, does anybody remember there were, three, there were two and a half tribes that were set on Jordan, and then the other, what, nine and a half tribes went into the land? But does anybody remember it was Reuben, Gath, and half the tribe of Manasseh. Reuben, Gath, half the tribe of Manasseh, they settled in Jordan. So when Joshua goes across the Jordan River, do these tribes want to go, or do they say, we already got our land, we're not going to go over there and fight for you guys, we've got our land already. And so what happens is, Joshua tells them, when they go through the river, how many stones do they pick up? Does anybody remember that? How many stones do they pick up? Twelve stones. Those 12 stones symbolize what? 12 tribes, okay? Do the people of Reuben, Gad, and half the tribe of Manasseh, while they have their territory over here, do they have to cross the Jordan River and fight to take over this land? Yes, they do. And then later on, they're allowed to go home. But so this is a time when all Israel is together, and they go into battle, all Israel, all 12 tribes. And so this Reuben, Gad, and half the tribe of Manasseh have to cross the Jordan River to help the other nine and a half tribes. And that's uh, something there. Now,